All right, fam. So, um, like I said, we back at it. Now, this is not really part two, but this is part two of that part one. But we're going to treat it as such. So, um, yeah, we've been dealing with the dog-headed people, right? The, um, the Canaanites, right? Those with the xenocephalic, right? Those having the dog's head, right? Dog-headed men. Now, this is said to be of an ancient race, right? We're dealing with sources that um, they're saying that these are an ancient, monstrous race, right? Known as the Ceno Valley. Or the dog headed men. Alright. And, um, we've been dealing with Canaan, right? And when we're dealing with Canaan, what did we get? The etymology on Canaan pointed us to the dog, right? The dog light. So that's where we've been since. Right. We also learned that Canaan was a servant. He was supposed to serve, right? Being domesticated, right? And a slave, right? So, um, we're going to continue on with where this search took us, right? And I want you to, uh, see that we're talking about Canada, right? For the canine, right? The biological family, Canada, right? See that right there? Just so you know. All right. Canine. Similar, all right. So we go back and uh, that's it. Letters, okay. We right here. So when we go back, <laughs> uh, all right. All right, so uh, it says the Canada, right, is a lineage of carnivorians that includes domestic dogs, wolves, foxes, jackals, dingoes, and many other extant and extinct dog-like mammals. A member of this family is called a canid, right? Canid, right? Canid. Right, Canaan Day it says Canaanites are found on all continents except Antarctica, having arrived independently or accompanying human beings over extended periods of time. Human beings, right? They are mostly social animals living together in family units or small groups and behaving cooperatively typically only the dominant pair in group in a group breeds and a litter of young is reared annually in an underground den all right canids communicate by scent, signals, and vocalizations. They are very intelligent. One canid, the domestic dog, long ago, entered a partnership with humans and today remains one of the most widely kept domestic animals. Alright? 
So we learned to, what was it? Was it here? No, sorry. Wrong, wrong breakdown. We learn. Servant was to be a domesticated attendant. Servant, right? Which Canaan was supposed to be. Right? Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. All right. So, um, Canaan, right? Lowland, right? Now, um, Let's get back to what we were looking at. It says that they were, uh, they also had their kids in underground dens. All right. Keep this in mind as well. I'm going down though. Right. And we're going to look at this tab. All right. it says one canid the domestic dog enter into a partnership with humans long ago right this partnership is documented as far back as 26,000 years ago it's documented they're saying that this is documented right when the footprints of a young boy aged about 8 to 10 were found in a chave cave in southern France walking alongside what was identified as a large dog or wolf. The earliest recorded fossil of a dog was found to be around 36,000 years ago in Goyet cave in Belgium. Even earlier wolves were found fossilized in the same locations as human sites that date back 300,000 years showing how far back humans and wolves had interactions with one another. All right? This is what they're saying, right? And if you notice, they're always found in the cave, right? They're always found in the cave, right? I just found that to be interesting, you know, in a cave, right, in a cave, because in this other article, right, in the ancient bond, as we just read about 26,000 years ago, right, it's pretty ancient. Um, it says, as domestication is often associated with large increases in population density and crowded living conditions, these unfavorable environments might be the selective pressure that drove the rewiring of both species, the author surmises, right? For example, living in crowded conditions with humans may have conferred an advantage on less aggressive dogs leading to more submissive canines and eventually to the pet whose puppy dog eyes gaze at us with unconditional affection. All right. So here we were dealing with 36,000 years ago in the cave, right? That fits tight spacing right confinement so they but they was they was trapped with the dog straight up that's what you're getting they were trapped with the dog or they were the dog 
I mean, I don't know. We got something for y'all to look at. All right. I'm gonna um, check this out. Dog-like people. Right? I mean, this is what we've been talking about. Right? Dog-like people, you see them? And how they're eating? And how the Most High early said those who what? So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Most High said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. That's what we're looking at, right? Is that with me, fam? I mean, these are all said to be people like dog people. These are your Canaanites. This one's going to, um, Link in with the Neanderthal New Man Nephilim joint. As you can see. I mean, look at this. You see what I'm saying? And this is done by a number of people. Right? So, uh, it's not just something I'm pulling out my hat. Create myself. This is just gathered information on the subject. And I just happen to make myself aware of the subject. Because I'm tired of people referring to people that look like them as Canaanites. When Canaanites are dog people dogs I mean, look at this they're riding on horses y'all need to start doing some more research too many people arguing and hating man it's eight but no research look at this All right. Know your research. I don't want to hear nobody being called a Canaanite just because their skin's dark and they happen to live in an area acquainted to the land. The hijack is real, people. And it's at a level that you don't take in for consideration. You underestimate it. But you claim to overstand everything. These are dog people. Right? You see the lady wear with the beard, right? And they call that dog the bearded collie, right? The bearded collie. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. Right? We're talking Canaanites, right? We're talking about hideous 
vile creatures that were base men. Yeah. Those that buy and sell, right? Merchants of traffickers, right? The lowland that live in dens and underground caves. Hair like dogs. Right? I think y'all should get it clear about who y'all call Canaanite, man. Alright. Let's carry on. It says the pariah dog. In ecology, the term pariah dog refers to the free and ranging dogs that occupy an ecological niche based on waste from human settlements. Free raging dogs. That's just another way to say nomad, all right? Nomadic dog, all right? That term nomad, I'm going to develop into a series as well. All of these different breakdowns are going to be the series because they're all skipped over. But I'm going to highlight them for you, all right, fam? So, um, if y'all vibe with the information, man, do your part and just share it. You know what I mean? This is for y'all. This is for the fan. I got a hive for y'all. A hive. Nothing but a hive. A hive. Alright? I got a hive for y'all. So, yeah. It says, um, that these dogs were based on waste from human settlements, right? It says when used in this manner, the term describes a large percentage of dogs worldwide, especially in developing countries, Eastern Europe and the Balkans, right? The Balkans. It says most prior dogs are free ranging. Not all free ranging dogs are genetically pariah dogs, though they are outcasts right in the social sense and thus must still be called pariahs by observers who are not sinologists feral dogs may be of any or mixed breeds individual dogs may be stray pets descendant from strays or from litters abandoned by owners they may live in packs pairs or singly Right. It says all authentic strains of prayer dogs are at risk, losing their genetic uniqueness by interbreeding with purebred and mixed bred strays. To prevent this from happening, some strains of pariah dogs are becoming formally recognized, registered, and pedigreed as breeds in order to preserve the pure type. All right. It says that um, it's also known as the Carolina dog. It says the Carolina dog found in the southeastern United States of America is one example of a pariah dog type, ter, pariah type feral dog. The Carolina dog closely resembles feral dogs found in deserts of the Middle Eastern countries. Both the desert dog, known as the Canaan dog, and Carolina dog are recognized as peer breads by major registries. Canaan dog. Alright. In the Carolinas. Canaan dog. Y'all following me? Canaan dog. Canaanites, dogs, canine, all right, dog race people, that's what we're dealing with, Sinophallic, 
right? Sinocephaly. Sorry, sinocephaly, right? So we we dug on Canaan dog, right? This is Canaan. All right. I want to dig on the etymology for this. It says the English term Canaan, right? Due to the, oh, comes from, sorry. The English term Canaan comes from the Hebrew Canaan, right? Greek, right? Canaan, right? And finally in Latin, it appears right as cana ana right and then it's found on coins from the phoenicia in the last half of the first millennium all right keep in mind this right here all right it says the etymology is uncertain an early explanation derives the term from the Semitic root to be low, humble, and subjugated, right? Some scholars have suggested that this implies an original meaning of lowlands. See how we're back at the lowlands? All right. It says the subjugated. All right, the lowlands. To be low, humble, right, subjugated. Calm, calm, right, kanam, kanam, right. So, um, I found this other site. And um I found it interesting because now I'm starting to see the dog connection and everything. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. Alright. So here we have the word Sirios. It's Greek for the English Sirius, meaning scorching or sparkling. The ancients described the rising of the star Sirius to be associated with the scorching heat of the torrid days of midsummer. We know of today as the dog days for this reason. Called Sirius, the soul and water carrier of Isis, initiates into the secret mysteries of Isis wore masks representing heads of dogs. Isis declares that I am she that rises in the dog star. The description of her star in Hesiod's shields of Hercules described the influence of the magic of Isis. One of these men, one of these men, the soul sink into the earth into the house of Hades, but their bones, once the skin has petrified around them, petrify in the dark earth under the influence of scorching Sirius. All right. It says that Hecate is one of the many titles of Isis in the magical propriety of the Platonic or Platonic Egypt. She is called the she dog or B I T C H, okay? It says Lucan says we have received into our Roman temples thine Isis and divinities half dog. This title for Isis is associated with the dog, which also correlates with her shining symbol in the heavens known as Sultis or Sirius. Sirius is the alpha star in the constellation 
of Canis Major, the great dog, or more commonly known today as the Dog Star. Alright. We're going to be digging on this a lot. Alright. And I want you guys to know. It's another thing I wanted to point out. It says, the Persian word Khan, a title of dignity or ruler of a monarchy, and is also translated as king in the east. The word Khan is said to be identical with can, derived from the Latin canis. From the Latin canis, we get the name from the ancient city or ancient country known as Canaan from whom the Canaanites were named, and also the Canaan dog. The dogs of Canaan began in ancient times as a mongrel in ancient Canaan, where the Canaanites lived, roughly corresponding to the region encompassing modern-day Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, in the western parts of Jordan. The Canaan dog would seem to mimic the exact characteristics of the people of Israel we know today as the Canaanites, making this connection to the national breed dog as Israel apocalyptic. All right. Come. All right, Khan, Canis, Canaan, Canaanites, Mongol. Mongrel, all right, etymology on mongrel. Mixed breed dog from obsolete mixture, mingling, base of a mong. To knead together and mingle, all right, mingling. Person not of pure race. All right. Mingle. To bring together. All right. To mix. All right. Related to the second element in the mung. Right. To knead together. To need fashion fit. To join with others, be sociable. See, the Most High said that the Gentile will cling itself on to the nation of Israel. Right? The Gentile. Right? And we've been dealing with Canaan this whole time, right? So did you know these were the Canaanites? Did you know these were the Canaanites? I ask you one more time. Did you know these were the Canaanites? I didn't think so.
we're gonna get into it. Y'all know how we do. We're not gonna beat around the bush. Alright. This is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. Alright. Job chapter 30, verse 1. But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yeah, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried out after them as after a thief. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys and caves of the earth and in the rocks. Among the bushes they braid under the nettles, they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yeah, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. They were viler than the earth. And now I am their song. Yeah, I am their byword. We know what vile means. Go back and look it up. Read it with us. And this image sure does fit the description. Doesn't it? So I, I again urge everyone to do more and more in research. Because if you're doing research you begin results like these, like this. And you wouldn't be calling people who look like you Canaanites. You would know. I gotta do some homework. I did this for my fans. To let my fan know. To let my indigenous copper colored people know. Copper colored tribes. I came to let Israel know. What side are you on? This is the image that I see. So, um, yeah, fam. We'll definitely be exploring this topic more, but this was just to let those know. To identify that Canaanite. That canine. All right. I'm going to clear up the confusion for all my peeps. I hope y'all found this informative. I'm getting ready to um, write it on out. But before we do, as we usually do, it's fair use, all in your face. All right. Never without it. All day, right? We're going to hit pause in this joint. And, um, 
as we fair use this all day. I just want y'all to know that you know, I do this out of a hive. Alright? A hive. If you don't know what that is, you can ask or look it up. This is for my fan, man. I just want everybody to get a clear perspective. Stop falsely identifying people out of the education from a religious background in view. Alright? This is what this is for. So with that said, um, we're going right out. And um, this will be it. I hope y'all enjoyed part one of this series. We'll be doing more. Shalom. Kids always smell like yoga. Oh, I'd wash them, and I'd be back before I even got to class. Finally, I discovered the new Tide and Downy Odor Defense Collection. Tide gets out the yoga aroma, while Downy keeps them fresh all day. Now I don't smell like wet dog. I smell good. Dog. I smell like wet dog. How I don't 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 smell like wet dog. I smell good. Don't just mask odors, eliminate them with the new Tide and Downy Odor Defense Collection.